So this is my ESP32 data logger that I have designed and built. I call it the B data logger, even though it doesn't you know, track the data of Bs. Um, it is the next installment in my B product family line of ESP32 boards. That's the BS3, that's the B motion S3, and that is uh, the B data logger. This then has a built-in motion sensor. So anyways, um, even though it doesn't track the data of Bs, it is a really good data logger because I've included a host of features that make that really convenient for data logging. Uh, the most, uh, probably the most important one is it has a built-in high precision real-time clock so you can track the actual date and time of when you've collected data. Um, it has an SD card slot on the back so you can store data to an SD card slot. It has an on-off switch uh, for the battery. It also comes included with a uh, little coin cell holder for the real-time clock. The real-time clock will run without this, but if you were to turn off your board or put it into deep sleep, the real-time clock will lose its you know, time. And so when you turn it back on, you have to reset it. If you don't want to do that, you can attach this little coin cell and it will keep the time um, for, I believe these little coin cells will last a couple of years. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. The reason why I don't attach it uh, when I ship it is because if you wanted to put this board into a breadboard to do some, you know, testing or whatever, this will get in the way of the pins going into the breadboard. But you can do all your testing and then attach it later and it's easy enough. Anyways, after that, now we have two stemma connectors here. So you can t attack, uh, attach a SparkFun or Adafruit breakout sensor board. So if you want to collect different types of data with these, it makes it super easy. Now you might be wondering why do I have two of them when you can t technically, you know, string these together, make you know a whole bunch of them in a row. Now the reason why I do that is because I also have two LDOs, two voltage regulators. One of them stays on all the time to power the ESP32, and the other one turns off in deep sleep. And so this stem connector is on the LDO that turns off, and this one's always on. The reason why you'd want to do that is because you know, if you're putting your board to sleep and you have sensors plugged into it, you don't necessarily want your sensors to be drawing power when they're not doing anything. So if we connect it to the semiconductor that turns off, the sensors will turn off and save you additional power in deep sleep. But also at the same time, if you do want to have them on all the time, for instance, if you want to wake up your ESP32 based off of some sort of sensor reading. Obviously, you don't want it to go to sleep. You need it to stay on. So that's what the other stem connector is for. In addition to having the two LDOs, uh, it gives you additional headroom for attaching sensors, whatever else, without worrying about you know browning out the USB 32 itself. So a lot of additional head headroom there. It has a LiPo connector, so you can power this thing off of a LiPo battery. It has a LiPo charging circuitry, so you can plug in a USB power source and it will charge the LiPo. It has voltage monitoring, so we can track you know, the battery life of a LiPo. And it also has a USB detection. Now, what that means is that you can detect if you know, a USB power source has been plugged in or not. And you might be wondering, well, what's, what's useful about that? The most obvious thing, at least in my mind, um, is if you are tracking data, like, let's say you have this thing plugged into a wall outlet and it's just running and it's just sending data over MQTT and then you lose power to your house or whatever, then obviously it's not going to be, you're going to be losing data because it's not going to be on and not being able to save it or send it anywhere. But with this USB detection, if you lose power and you have a LiPo battery already plugged into it, it will detect that it's lost power and then we can start saving the data to the SD card. And then once data or once power has been restored, we can dump that data off of the SD card over MQTT. So you don't have any gaps in your data, even if you lose uh, power. I have a sketch already made up for this, so that's not something you'd have to figure out on your own. Um, obviously you have to tweak it for whatever your use case may be, but all the hard stuff's been figured out. Um, speaking of sketches, um, I support, or at least at launch, I'm supporting Arduino and CircuitPython, and I have a bunch of sketches uh, in both languages for all sorts of stuff. So, you know, how to use all the features on this board, try to make it as simple as possible and easy to get uh, hit the ground running. On top of these sketches, 
uh, I have everything available on the GitHub as well. So I have the schematics. Uh, this board's completely open source, so if you want to see how it was made, check out the GitHub. There's uh, schematics, there's 3D models, in case you want to build like a 3D uh, printed enclosure for it. I put the models on there so it's really easy to design around. Um, yeah, and a host of other information on the GitHub. So check out the GitHub, links in the description below. And then on top of that, uh, lastly, we have an RGB LED, which, you know, obviously if you want to use it for some sort of uh, status indicator or just for fun, you have to include that as well. Now, all of this is good and well, um, but if, if it doesn't last very long on battery, it's not a very good data logger. So I've designed this from the ground up to be as energy efficient as possible in deep sleep. And this uh, board will get as around 20 microamps in deep sleep mode. And that's even if you were to plug in sensor boards into the stomach connector that turns off in deep sleep. You can basically plug in as many of these as you wanted into the LDO that turns off in deep sleep, and it'll still get around 20 microamps, which is really, really good. It's basically as low as you can get by just keeping the ESP32 in deep sleep. It doesn't take into account anything else. Now, to put that into perspective, I got another example for you here. So if you wanted to build your own data logger, which I have done, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here so you can hopefully see this a little better. You know, you'd have to buy some of these components separately and, you know, put them on a red breadboard. Obviously, the wiring could be a bit better, but this is just an example. And so you need some sort of development board of some kind and a breakout board for an SD card. And if you want to track the actual real time uh, that data is collected, you need a high precision real time clock as well. Now, just just looking at these components you see right here, all of these cost more than what the B data logger costs if you were to buy them separately, or I should say separately together. Um, and this has way more features and is obviously in a much uh, more compact form factor. But on top of that, if you were to run that off of battery, this setup gets around 1.6 milliamps in deep sleep, which is crazy bad. So this gets, 20 microamps, and another way to put it is this one gets 1,600 microamps in deep sleep. Another way to put that, because you might be wondering, well, what, okay, how does that actually translate to battery life? So I charge or I run a lot of my projects off these little tiny 400 milliamp hour batteries. If I was to have this waking up every two hours and taking a reading and going back to sleep off of this 400 milliamp hour battery, it would last about a year. I think it's like 339 days or something is what I've calculated it out to. Now, obviously that's just a calculation. You know, other factors can come into play. It could be longer, it could be shorter, but it's in that kind of ballpark. Whereas this setup, if I was to run it off this little battery, wouldn't even last 10 days doing the same thing. So you can see there's considerable difference as far as how uh, long this thing can last on battery. And that's with a tiny little battery. You know, if you were to use something like, you know, 800 milliamp hour battery, that's twice as long. You're, you're looking at close to two years. If you're looking at something like this, you know, which I, if you wanted to use that, you, I think I calculated this one out to be like an eight year. It's how long it would last with that, which is crazy. In any case, yeah, that's, uh, I've designed it to be as energy efficient as possible. All right, so we've got that. Now, on top of that, now you, you can connect your sen sensors this way, you know, and string them along if you have, uh, you know, more than one, and that will work just fine. But if you wanted to have a little bit of a cleaner setup, I have designed these little breakout uh, boards. Now, these are sold separately, but they're pretty cheap. In any case, what they allow you to do is attach an Adafruit sensor and your board to this, so it gets um, nice and compact here. And this is another one. This is the, so you can connect either two or you can connect one. Um, the only thing you need to do is just verify that the sensors, uh, the pinouts on the sensors match what the pinouts are on the bar, board are. Adafruit is pretty good about staying really consistent with their pinouts, so almost all of their sen sensor boards should work, but just verify before you plug them in. SparkFun's a little bit all over the place, so you'd have to you know, double check and just make sure that it's compatible. But in any case, uh, this allows for a nice little compact setup. This one's green just because this is one of the first boards I made and I wanted to test it out uh, over a long period of time, make sure it obviously works. And so I have 
One of those little itty bitty 400 milliamp hour batteries fits perfectly underneath there. And I've had this running for probably a month and a half or so, just sitting in my windowsill, collecting uh, lux values to light and temperature. And I'll show you a graph, it's kind of cool. But in any case, that 400 milliamp hour battery is hardly dipped at all. So it's gonna run for months and months and months and maybe even close to a year. So in any case, these are available as well. You don't need them, but I did want to try and make it a little bit more uh, compact uh, for the little sensor, you know, data collection. So you could put a battery in this thing, set it on a shelf or, or in an attic or whatever you're wanting to do, and uh, off it'll go. So that's that. Uh, the last thing I'll show you is what comes in the packaging if you were to buy one. These are available on Tendi and if you're in the UK or uh, EU, I sell them on Electrons. So those links will be in the description below. In any case, um, pull this out. So we have that. So we've got the B data logger, obviously. We've got a couple pin headers. So if you want to attach that to a breadboard, we've got the a coin cell holder for the um, RTC, and then a sticker, and then we have this little pinout here. So it gives you shows you all the pinouts and some information on the back, you know, on where to find the example codes and things like that, and then some additional information on the inside. So that's everything that comes with the packaging. That is pretty much it, I think. So thank you for watching. And like I said, these are available online now. So check out the stores. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And until next time, uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.